Well, good evening, everybody. I trust that this has been enough time to turn off your cell phones. I just thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, it's a very special time for Carrie Jo to be able to showcase what God has given her to bless other people with. So let's start this evening with a word of prayer. Lord, I pray that you would bless this time. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would just put a great peace over Carrie Jo as she performs and over Miss Joy as she accompanies on the piano. Lord, I pray that your, the music that you've given would bless hearts tonight and it would encourage us. It would be beautiful sound to our ears. And Lord, I just pray that it would just be a wonderful evening. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Well, this first piece that Carriage is going to play was written by a man named Bach, who all through his life truly understood the purpose of music. He was often quoted as saying, the aim and final end of all music should be none other than the glory of God and the refreshment of the soul. It is our hope that this music will accomplish that purpose tonight. This masterpiece for the cello, written around 1720, has truly withstood the test of time, for you will recognize it as soon as you hear it tonight. It's six movements within the first box suite, and she's going to play all six of those movements tonight. And each one is a type of a dance, each of those movements. You're going to begin with the gentle prelude, which is the most famous one that I'm sure most of you will recognize immediately. It's going to be followed by a stately allemande, and then an arousing courant, an elegant and intimate serban, two lighter minuets, and then closing with an energetic jig. So I trust that each of you will enjoy as Carajo begins to play. Thank you. 
for coming today. Um, I really appreciate your support. It's neat to look out in the crowd and see people from different stages and different times in my life, and you're all here tonight to um, celebrate with me the gifts God has given me to share. So thank you so much. Um, at the point of the recital last year, which was a little over a year ago, I was, at that recital, I was just amazed at the progress that God had allowed me to make through the patient coaching of my teachers. And I knew there were still areas to grow in, but I had no idea how much further and how much further I still need to go. Um, there were many times this year when my teacher, who unfortunately was not able to be here tonight, he would introduce a new concept to me. Um, 
and it would take me out of my comfort zone. It would feel awkward when I tried it. It didn't make sense to me at the moment. And I was faced with a decision each time. Am I fine and content with where I'm at? Or do I really want to improve and do whatever is necessary to improve? Um, I did choose to trust my teacher and chose to do things even when they didn't make sense. And the Lord was teaching me greater life lessons through that. And I wanted to just share a few of those with you. Um, in Matthew 11, 28 through 29, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Uh, that verse is very familiar to most of us. It's, it's Jesus' invitation to come and find rest in him. Rest from our sin, rest from ourselves, our works. Just come and find rest in him. But the second part of it is for those who have already found that rest and salvation. He says, come learn of me, and you'll find more rest. More rest unto your souls. And that really related to what I was learning this year. Um, in the musician realm and in the athletic realm especially, we understand that you can't be content with where you're at. If you have to constantly be growing, constantly developing, constantly working on your technique, your tone, your vibrato, whatever it is, you have to keep working on it. And so it is in Christ. We come to him and we're, we receive his gift of salvation. And that's wonderful. But have you stopped there? He says that there's more rest. More rest to find as we continue to walk with him, as we continue to learn from him through his word. So on my journey in cello this year, when I decided each time, you know what? I don't care how crazy this idea seems. I'm going to do it and just see what happens. Um, there were many obstacles to face. I faced many walls of tension. I faced pain. I faced discouragement. I faced hours of practice that seemed to go nowhere. Um, all because I chose to trust my teacher that somewhere beyond all of it, I was, it was going to help me somehow. <laughs> um, and it's the same in our relationship with Christ. Sometimes we don't want to go further with him because we're afraid of what it will cost us. And it will cost you. It will cost you more surrender to him. It'll cost you the enemy attacking you. It'll cost you rejection by friends around you in some circumstances. But the end result is all worth it. It really is. Uh, musically, the result of it all was I had more joy in playing. I was able to communicate more effectively with my music. Um, it brought a release in my sound. And spiritually, when we press into Christ more and learn of him and find that rest, we get sweeter fellowship with him. Um, we experience the reality of him living in us like he says he does. I think the issue lies in trust. We all want the end result, but sometimes we're afraid to trust our guide. And as I'm now a teacher and work with students, I have, some, I have seen many students throughout my um, playing years, and some trust and some don't. And those who trust, you can take very far. And those who won't trust you, won't practice what you give them, and they can't go far. It's the same with Christ. He says, trust me, I'll take you into the unknown, where the abundant life is where I want you to be. And we have to choose, can I trust him as my guide? He said he's the way, not just in salvation, but in every area of our life. So I would just encourage you, keep pressing into Christ. In whatever area you're in, keep striving for excellence in that area. That was a very good rendering of Bach. That was very beautiful. Good job. This song, uh, this piece was written by a Czech composer by the name of Anton, Anton N. Dvorak. Dvorak. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't speak those languages. <laughs> Throughout his life, Dvorak was known for three things. He loved his God, he loved his music, and he loved his backyard. And he's just always been fond of his nature, of nature and writing about nature. Nature actually many times um, prompted his compositions. And in 1883, he composed a song cycle, as they put it, it's a song cycle for piano four hands. That means four hands are playing it. Uh, so it's a song cycle for four hands entitled From the Bohemian Forest. This piece captures aspects of the Bohemian landscape that the composers loved so well. As the years went by and Dvorak's fame increased, 
he was invited to compose in New York. And when he, he accepted the offer, but before he went, he did a final tour in his home country. And uh, in that tour, he was touring with his two close friends, a violinist and a cellist, and they realized that they had no solo cello piece to prepare uh, for his cellist friend. So Dvorak took his fifth cycle of the cycle he had composed and rewrote it for the cello. His, published, his publisher entitled the piece Valdesro, meaning the silent woods. This beautiful rendition has a huge, was a huge success back in 1894, and I think you'll agree it's still very beautiful today. Dvorak once said, a melody is a beautiful thing. It can touch the soul in ways that words cannot. This quote aptly describes this piece. As we walk through the silent woods together, you'll hear the dreamy, lush melodies, creating a seamlessly endless melodic line supporting a rich harmonies or supported by rich harmonies and tensions of the unknown and the beautiful hope that soars above the sorrows in, that, in the woods. So this is The Silent Woods by Dvorak. Thank you. 
Well, tonight we thought we'd give everybody a nice little treat. As you see in your program, there is a piece in there by Rachmaninoff. This is the prelude in D major, and it is going to be played by Miss Joy Mensel on the piano. I hope you enjoy this prelude.
It's been great so far, and it's only going to get better. This last piece tonight is the Rekibros. It was written by Jasper, Gasper Casado, who was a cellist of Spanish descent uh, who came to fame in the early 1900s. He began his cello at a very early age, and by the time he hit nine years old, he made such a striking performance that a famous cellist by the name of Pablo Casal saw him and said, I'll take him as my student. So he offered him to be a student. He continued to grow from there. Casado adored his teacher and progressed rapidly during his nurturing. Admired for his virtuosic technique, Casado uh, composed several pieces for the cello and incorporated elements of his Spanish heritage. The piece you're going to hear tonight is the Requebros, which carries with it the idea of two lovers paying compliments one to another. In the middle section, hints a little bit of a Spanish bullfight, and then ends with a fit of Spanish fury. So sit back and enjoy the Requebros by Casado.
Excellent job. Did y'all like that? Yeah. I think we should give another round. Well, thank you so much for serenading us. And I appreciate every single one of y'all coming out tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was a uh, refreshment to your soul and your ears. And we'd love to have you stay for some refreshments downstairs. There's some light refreshments downstairs. So we're going to go ahead and pray for it. So as soon as you get down there, you can go ahead and grab something to eat. And thank you again so much for coming tonight. Lord, thank you for a great evening. Uh, Lord, you really blessed it. And it was a great blessing to me. And I know so many enjoyed it tonight. I pray that you would bless the fellowship now, help everybody to be able to stay and have safe drives home. In Jesus' name I pray.